Welcome, everybody. This is day seven of the 12 Days at Cloudbus, and I'm uh, joined by Rudy Tabuni from uh, Macergy. Now, day seven is typically uh, seven swans of swimming, but I don't have any swans and there's no lake around to swim. So uh, we're stuck with Rudy. Uh, so, Rudy, you're with uh, Macergy, who's a managed service provider. And uh, I've been uh, actually, I've been an analyst about 20 years, and Macergy, I think, was one of the first companies. Uh, that I remember working with. And so uh, a lot of people haven't heard of Maester G, but you've been around a long time. Why don't you uh, uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about Maester G. Sure, thanks, Ayos, and it's, and it's a pleasure to be here with Tuppy with you today. So, so Maester G, Maester G's been around for 20 years. Um, obviously, we're a pioneer in the software design network, uh, uh, you know, service, right? And, then, and since then, we've also offered a bunch of cloud communication services as well. And we have a unique, we're unique in that we offer the network, the uh, cloud communications and the security architecture. So with that, Maester G is a company that, that works very well. It's where your one-stop shop for uh, those types of services. Yeah, I, I remember when Maester G was founded, actually, um, it was the network was built specifically to handle a lot of video traffic. Um, which is ironic today, given everybody's working from home using video. Um, it probably, idea was a little bit ahead of its time uh, back at the turn of the century, but clearly the market's come around now and uh, with all the video that we're using. Now, this is a, uh, a series on cloud communications and uh, you're not really, while you offer a communication service, you're really no more of a network provider. And um, uh, I, whenever, uh, when I look at my research, uh, the majority of time when people adopt cloud communications, they also adopt an SD-WAN, right? The two seem to go hand in hand. Uh, why is that? What does the SD-WAN bring to communications uh, that, that makes it so in demand today? Well, what it does is it's really the foundation that major services are built upon. So you have to have a network that can be deployed, obviously, in a private branch and a work from home environment in your enterprise environments. So once you have that that uh, solid network foundation, then you can put services like unified communications on top. And when you do that, you're able to do that in a manner that provides a industry best SLA that we offer et cetera. And then the last thing that I'll mention is that uh, from a foundation perspective, the network's built on a solid security architecture. So to your point, um, what we've seen uh, through the industry is that we've had a number of customers say, I'd say almost 65% say that when they deploy that, just to your point, they, they want to deploy the entire solution and they want to do it from a single vendor, vendor just to, for simplicity. All right. Now, uh, you guys have had an SD-WAN offering for a while and recently you announced your uh, SASE offering and for People watching this don't know what SASE is. It stands for Secure Access Service Edge as one of the coming together of network and security. So can you tell me a little bit about what your SASE offering is and how it works? Well, yeah, very simply, it just it's, it's meant to converge the best of breed technologies into one simple service. So you start with your, uh, so you start by embedding security to the network. Then you, uh, you offer different services such as hybrid firewall flexibility. That allows you to have security at the edge or actually in the cloud or both. And so together that allows you to have to deploy solutions. And the beauty is you can deploy at your own pace. So if you're, if you're slowly migrating uh, your organization, you can do it in a way where I want to tackle this, this group of people first and this environment first and move on. And you can do that in a secure fashion. And that's what makes it attractive. Now, when I, uh, when I read about SASE, uh, some of the stuff that I read states that all security must be delivered from the cloud. But I know Maser G offers a solution where the security is actually on premises and then you manage it from the cloud, right? So is that still SASE? And if so, what, what benefit does that bring? Well, it does a couple of things. Having, having the security appliance there at, at on-premise allows you to, to keep that, uh, your information secure from that perspective. Manage it from the cloud, the, the unique service that we offer is we're actually uh, monitoring your service for you. And, and we can detect things as they happen or before they happen to make sure that you're secure. So from that perspective, it's absolutely is cloud. So you get the best of both worlds. Okay. And um, yeah, and actually I think the other uh, thing that you get by having it on-prem is just when you've got large offices, sending all that inspection traffic to it in the cloud actually drives quite a bit of bandwidth up. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The, the other kind of unique thing you guys did this year with your SD-WAN offering is you brought in AI, right? And so the whole concept of the AI-driven WAN uh, how does that work? Like how, how does AI manage a network? There's some network managers I've talked to that they're a little scared of that, right? Letting the machines run things. 
Yeah, they are. But I tell you what, um, it's very when when you first deploy a, a network, you a customer they may think they know how their network's going to run and the type of traffic patterns that they're going to have, but. And maybe they do, but maybe they don't. And those change over time. You can't assume what you deployed day one is going to be the same you deployed 365 days from now as well. So the power of A allows us to adapt to that. We see those patterns. We can adapt to them and make sure that your network is able to handle those, those patterns effectively and also uh, you know, provide a better overall experience for you. So we really think of it as a set it and forget it sort of mentality. And does AI affect the security side as well? Certainly, you um, from an AI perspective, you definitely want to be able to predict when there's issues. Again, back to learn, it's, it's about learning your patterns from a security perspective. You know the way you're, over time, you're going to see how, uh, how individuals, how uh, your servers react. And when you start to see things that are out of the normal, it might be perfectly normal, but we're going to tell you, there, hey, we noticed this. Are, are you okay with that? Okay. Now, um, you're also a, what I would think of as a full stack uh, managed service provider in that you offer not only the network service, but also the UCAS services on top. And a lot of customers perhaps would buy the network from a company like you and then buy UCAS from a pure play SaaS provider, right? So uh, tell, tell me about, I know you've got a, a launch coming up. What is it you're announcing? And then why does it make sense to buy UCAS and networking from one company? Sure, so let me start with why does it make sense to buy from one company? Because I think that's absolutely relevant. And again, it goes back to what I was uh, saying early into, earlier, where when you buy, when you purchase the networking, you're purchasing it from a provider like Matry because it's industry best SLAs, the network's well-defined, um, it's expandable, um, flexible. When you, when you couple that and you put a service like UCAS on top of it, you get to take advantage of all the same SLAs because the, uh, all your traffic, your video traffic, your voice traffic, everything's running over that secure network and, and it's uh, optimized for that. So that's why you want to do them together. If you're separate, then you're always going to be pointing fingers. Is my network the problem or is it the service that's the problem? There's, there's a, you know, with Macer G, you just know that it's, that it's one person you got to ask, hey, go figure out what's wrong with my network. Now, it is um, December of 2020, so we're near the end of the year. And uh, one thing that's always popular to do for industry people is to come up with a prediction. So if you gaze into your Maser G crystal ball, right, what do you, uh, give us a prediction for what we should expect for 2021. So I'll give you two predictions. One, what, as we've learned from 2020, the pandemics really changed the way that we all operate and work. And so I think over time from a communications perspective, you're gonna see, see more and more people working from home and getting comfortable. Even after, you know, hopefully soon, sooner than later, we all get the, uh, the um, vaccine and we're all we're all in a good spot. But I think even after that pace, uh, even after that's happened, you're going to continue to see people work from home because co companies, more and more companies have figured out that you know what I can be very successful and work well from home. And that does a couple of things. It keeps your employees happy and it keeps them happy, and it and it helps with their bottom line. They don't have to worry about the uh, the move to uh, you know update a private branch or or a branch office things like that. That's one prediction on the communication side. On the uh, on the networking side, what I would tell you is. And you meant you kind of touched on it earlier. It's all about AI. I think you're going to see continued investment and enhancements in the AI space because it is really that simple. That's the golden care everybody's after. If we can get to a point where I just put a network, uh, I install a network, and I kind of just forget about it, that's that's what I predict is going to happen in 2021. All right. Well, so more work from home, but also more AI. So exactly. we're going to have, we have machines sitting with us in our homes. That's right. And uh, before I wrap up, one quick question. Who's the golfer behind you and what's the story behind that? That is Jordan Spieth. Oh, cool. Yeah, so that is actually, that's interesting you say that. So yeah, that's that's after he ran, he won the 2015 US Open. So uh, I'm a big Jordan Spieth fan. He's, he's had a rough go at it the last few years, but uh, well, you're in Texas. a native he's Texas guy, right? So that makes yeah. sense. Absolutely. Yeah, well, it, it, it was, uh, that little run he had was phenomenal. So It really uh, was. But uh, thanks for joining me, Rudy. This is, uh, again, day seven of the 12 Days of Cloud Mist, which is typically the uh, swans are swimming with masks on, of course, so they can be socially distant. Um, right. Anyways, I'm Zia's Kara Battle from ZK Research. Thanks, Rudy, for joining me uh, on day seven, and I hope everybody has a happy Cloudless. Thanks a lot, Zia. Appreciate the time.